All right, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to set up server-side rendering by processing even server files with Webpack. We'll set up Webpack to a new target, Node, and in so doing, restore our previous development hot reloading, as well as letting us render different kinds of files into a server-side render. We're going to start where we left off in the last episode. And if you need to catch up, get checkout SSR-Webpack. So last time we tried to render our app root component, we ran into a problem. Node, Babel, and Express, even with all of their power, don't understand images or markdown files. Node is able to require them, but Node is always expecting JavaScript. So when it tosses markdown into the compiler, this happens. If we commented the markdown out and reran it, we get a syntax error of an unexpected character. Now this is the representation of a file saved in Adobe Photoshop. That would be our link.jpg. So it turns out this is pretty solvable. There are a few solutions like Webpack isomorphic tools that hijack the require statement and replace it in Node on the server side. And while that's cool, it's also deprecated since target Node came to the Webpack configuration. What we want to do is we want to process Express.js so that images and markdown are properly handled and then run this outputted file with Node. We want to create a new server config and add a new package. So let's copy the config file for Webpack prod and call it Webpack Server JS. Now Webpack Server JS is going to have a different entry point and a different output. It's also not going to have a dev server. The entry will be server main JS. Let's call it server. And then grab source server main JS. Now as an output, it won't have a public path either. We're going to want to create a new directory. Let's call the directory build. So our server will be built into here, just like dist. Change the output to build. Now let's take out this optimized CSS, uglify compression, and broadly plugins. The HTML one while we're at it. Let's grab all of those plugins, take them out. Now let's npm install a new package. Webpack node externals. Let's require that now. Node externals equals require webpack node externals. All right, so the last two things we have to add to our config are target. Now the default for target is going to be web, and that's what we've been using so far. This tells webpack that we're going to run this in the browser. The new target will be node, which will tell webpack that we're using node to run the final outputted file. And that means because Node has access to all of these packages, it can just leave it as require, as opposed to making a bundle for the browser. The last option is externals. And we're going to set that to node externals as a function, which we got from the webpack node externals package we just loaded. This tells the webpack config that everything in node modules is to be skipped. All right, so let's try it out. Inside our package JSON, let's create a build server underneath build. It'll have Babel environment production, then Webpack, and config will be the Webpack server JS. Lastly, it'll have the same environment variable set to production. One more thing we'll add is the watch flag, which will cause Webpack to reload, much like the development server does, every time we change whatever's in our entry. So let's run build server. All right, so we have a server bundle JS, but does it change the app root? Let's uncomment this stuff. It seems to compile fine. So let's go back to package JSON. In the prod statement, let's change this from server main to source server bundle. So this is setting node to run our newly outputted server bundle. So we'll build the server, and then we'll run prod. Now it's not in source build. It's just in build. All right, so now we can see it's loaded up fine, and it's in production mode. The code that's sent down the pipe from our Express.js has all of our server-side rendering, and it's parsing the markdown just like native code. 
So that's amazing. We've actually gotten Webpack to compile Express into something that uses Markdown like native JavaScript. But what we want is while we're editing the production code, if we edit a server file, we want Webpack to reload it and rebuild it. And then we want the server to restart if it's ever rebuilt. So let's exit out and go back to our package JSON. We're looking at dev here. We have a node mon to watch the source server. What we really needed to watch is build. If Webpack builds another server bundle, it'll go into the build directory and nodemon will rerun. We want it to rerun build server bundle. So now if we do npm run dev, we can take express and change it. Let's give it a title. When we save it, we see that it's rebuilt and then it's reloaded, and the title is right here. So that's pretty amazing. We now have the ability to reload production environments as though they were development environments and see real-life changes to our server-side rendering. Okay, so last thing, we're going to do a bit of cleanup. We always have an image that's output with the server bundle. We don't really want that. So inside our Webpack server, we can go down to the image loader, make it a file loader, and make it emit file false. So now when we rerun it, there's no image output. All right, looks like we did it. We opened the door to yet another use for Webpack. It can compile server code with node build target to incorporate all the file types the loaders allow. With a new config file, we can create a server bundle that includes markdown and other asset types in the render. We can use the same server config in production and development for now, but we'll see how to break those up and why. If you need the final code, get check out SSR Webpack Final. Next, in our effort to build the ultimate Webpack boilerplate, we're still not totally there. One thing that's hindering our progress is we've been using Webpack only from the command line. In the next episode, we're going to look at using Webpack as a JavaScript function to start and restart our server after Webpack compilation. This next step separates the pros from those that never learn the true power of Webpack. Stay tuned.